All right, so we're going to take a look at Pixlr.com. So if you go to Pixlr.com or click the link, it should take you to Pixlr.com forward slash editor. And you can use this program to complete your design drills in the Core 80 course. So what it when you first open it, you might have a click, click a button that will say run uh, flash. You might have to do that. So just do that. But you ultimately will come to this page. And when you're analyzing the work, what I'd like you to do is to pick an artist, find a painting, uh, download that to your computer, and then you want to upload it into the program so that you can diagram it or draw over top of it. So what we want to do is we want to go to open image from computer. Uh, you could open an image also from the URL as well. So uh, we could actually try that. So let's say you go into um, Grady login. Let's go here. Okay, so now we're logged in. Okay, so what we can do is go down to class resources, list of approved masters. And so now we have a list of artists that you can use. And um, I like to try to find a Savoya. So let's come down here. I think he's down here a little further. Um, let's see, where is he? There he is. So you have two links. You can click artist search or about the artist. That'll take you to a Wikipedia page, but let's go ahead and click artwork search here. And so here's all of these uh, paintings uh, for, uh, for Soroya. And let's go ahead and pick one of these. Um, let's take a look at uh, this one here. Okay, just make sure, you know, kind of look around the edges, make sure it feels right, because sometimes these images are cropped. And if it is, then you don't want to use that necessarily. That's interesting. So in my case, what I'm going to do is right click on the image and then go down to save image as, or you can maybe just drag and drop it. Um, put in this little decamp folder here. So there's two things you can do. You can either download it or you can right click and hit copy image location. Okay, so now if we come back to the editor here, one of the options is to actually open it. Put it in there, hit okay. And now it brings the image in for you very nicely. All yeah, right. So what I'm trying to do is get this in so I can uh, have the image there. So once we have the image in the editor, now I'm going to close this out and I'm going to show you the other way how to open it. So once you close it, you can come here and say open image from computer. And I will go to the desktop which is the camp folder, hit the, I'm not sure about that. that was the Alexa. <laughs> so now we have the image open. Now what I'd like you to do is first take the color, remove the color out of all your images so that there's a black and white image, or let's say grayscale. And the way you do that is you can go up to adjustment, find hue and saturation, or if you notice, you can hit control U. Okay, so let's say I hit control U, boom, the saturation comes up. Look for saturation, drag it all the way down. Remove the color. So now we are just looking at the design, the composition, and the values. And also the drawing, the rendering aspect of it. But we remove all color from it.
over here under this area that's called layers, if you right click on that layer, you can click duplicate. Boom. That gives you another layer, okay? So when you're doing the homework, you want to have a grayscale version of it, a color version of it, and then we'll start to do our marks. Now, most of the marks that you're going to be making on there are going to be straight lines. So there's a couple ways to actually do that. So you want to come over to the toolbar over on the left-hand side and click the brush tool. Or if you notice, it gives you a letter B. So you can just click the letter B and it will select the tool for you. Now, if you try to draw on top of this, what you're going to see is that it gives you this, this kind of fat black line, okay? And what we would like to do is to come over here at the top here where it says brushes and make it a skinnier brush, maybe instead of 50, uh, let's go down to 20%. And hardness, let's make it 100% hard, okay? So that way you can see it gives you a nice, a much cleaner, crisp, crisper line. And we might even be able to reduce the uh, size of the brush in this specific image. Now on another one, it might be uh, bigger or, or smaller. So let's put it on a nine. Now, to me, nine is a little too small. So we might have to go maybe to a 15. Okay, boom. That gives us a good, good dark line. You could, if you want to change the color, you come down to the bottom here. Let's try white. That gives us a line as well, okay? Uh, if you want to try a, a color. Let's give it uh, some color. There we are. Now the problem is it's very hard to control this brush. So one trick you can do is I'm gonna delete this layer, open up and uh, make a new duplicate, is if you click anywhere, let's say we wanna draw a vertical here, just, just find, we'll start at the top of this sail. Let's say we start up here, okay? And I wanna change my color to black. So let's say we want to start up here in this right where that cross is, okay? So what you can do is just click and then hold the sh click once and then bring the the pointer to where you want to end the line. So you first click where you want to start the line, bring the cursor to where you want to end the line, hold the shift button down and then click and it gives you a straight line. So again, if I want to come from this point start at that same point and I want to come down through um, the sail and down through the head uh, of the old lady here and then the arm of the woman with the baby then I just come to where I want to end it hold the shift button and then click boom now I have a nice clean straight line and that's really important for when you're wanting to go across a across the image and uh, and and have a nice straight line because if you try to go too far without doing that, then it begins to look like this and looks really really bad, and it becomes harder uh, as you start drawing more lines. So again, shift, like click where you want to start, and then put your cursor where you want to end and then hold the shift button and then click okay and that gives you a straight line if again if you want to make the brush a little bit bigger so boom click there and we want to end it at the corner we hold the shift versus clicking and dragging which then gives you a wobbly uh, line when 
let's get rid of this layer. When you have to do something with values, you can duplicate this layer. Um, you might start maybe with a bigger brush and you can see the size of that brush now in the, in the circle. And so what you can do if you're coming in and doing values, you can do the same thing. Maybe we come up here and, and change the hardness to 100%, okay? So if we're doing values, again, you can click and hold the shift button down and just keep holding the shift button down. And every time you, you click, it gives you a nice clean straight line. And so when you when we get into the value section, this will be something that you want to do is to um, map out these dark shapes. Here's a dark shape here. Boom, boom, boom. Now, if this back here, if you went like this to here, that wouldn't be good. If you mess up like that and you hit, uh, if you're on a Mac, Apple, the Apple sign or the command, uh, button or the Apple button, and then Z, it'll undo it. On a PC, you, you would hold the command, I mean the control, and then Z. Now, the brush here is very, very big, so I want to make it smaller. And so one way to do that is to come down to where the diameter is. You can see now it's a smaller uh, brush. So again, right here's a dark in the background there. So we can just go ahead and fill that in. Uh, the, the boats are black here. Okay. So that's going to be part of the project. If you squint your eyes, you'll notice that the face here is basically a black uh, spot on a white background, which is a rounder. So again, this is one way of, of seeing how he's designing values, but I just wanted to show you how to use the tool so that you have the ability to do the design drills. Um, when you get into arabesques and you want curves, you, you can just Try your best to uh, make a curve using that same brush tool. Uh, it's going to look a little choppy, but that's just uh, unless you have a stylus and if you're just using a mouse, it's going to look a little choppy like that. Outside of that, I believe that's it. When you go to save it, there are a couple ways that you can save it. One way you can do it is you see you have uh, this layer and Let's go ahead and make a layer where we have um, some st some straight lines on it. Uh, dominant vertical, the dominant horizontal going across through the little baby. Have our dominant diagonal coming actually all the way. Hmm. Is that what we're feeling now? We're actually going to come down through here. Boom. Okay. So now we have some, some straight lines and we have some values and a curve. Now that means we have three different layers. So one way that you can save these is basically taking a screenshot of each page, okay, or each layer. So you just take a screenshot of what you see on the screen. You come over here, you hide that by clicking on that little arrow, you hit your screenshot tool, and you take another screenshot, and you can take another screenshot. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Another way is you show the, the, the image that you wanna save, and you come over to file, and you hit uh, save, And here's the name. So let's give it a name. 
we'll call it um, grayscale. The quality is good. Uh, keep it as a JPEG or a PNG file, okay? But just keep it what it says is a JPEG and 80% is fine. So then we're gonna hit okay. It's gonna ask us where we wanna save it. We can save it in that folder, done. Now we come to the second layer. We're gonna call this, I'm gonna to go to save. Everything is, uh, we're gonna change the name to line or whatever the name is that you wanna call it. We're gonna save it in the camp folder there. Boom, save. And now we're gonna to come to this last one here. We're gonna hit uh, save and call this curve. Actually, if I hit line, call it the same name and I hit okay, and I go to save it, it's gonna ask me, do I wanna replace it? So that's one way you know if you're using the same name and you don't wanna do that. So just hit cancel, come back, give it a different name. In this case, we'll say curve, hit okay. It's gonna to go to the decamp folder, hit save. And then if you want to save that entire file, you can hit save and then we'll come down to this PXD where it says layered Pixar, uh, Pixar uh, image, okay? You wanna save it like that. And then hit okay. And we'll save that, uh, call it image. And now we can close this window. Uh, do you wanna save the changes? No, I just did. Okay, so when we come back next time, again, if we wanna open that file again, we can just go back to open, find the PXD file right there and hit open. Boom, now we have that layer, that layer and the grayscale one. Close that out. If we wanna bring in an image or do something with it, we can go again, open image. Let's say we want to bring in the line one that we had. Boom, there, there it is. And that's it. If we go to the, the folder, we will be able to see that the images are there. Hope this helps. Ciao.